Shadow Allah, 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 أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah We praise Him We seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our own actions Whomsoever Allah guides none can lead astray and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray none can guide I testify that none has the right to be worshipped None has the right to our ultimate love and devotion but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except in a state of submission and Islam to your Lord. O oh, mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from one single person and from him he created his wife 
and from them both he created many men and women and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you O you who believe keep your duty to Allah fear him and speak the truth he will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement the best speech is the speech of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters for all the newly invented matters in religion are considered to be innovation and bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance and it takes to the hellfire يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه أهدا أم من يمشي سويا على صراط مستقيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran the meaning of this is is someone who walks aimlessly without direction without a destination walking randomly on their face is he similar to someone who is who is treading a straight path are these two people similar are they the same will they end up being in the same situation and the same destiny in Arabic this is called su'alu inkar or su'alu stinkar this is a question that signifies denial and rejection so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a very powerful and strong statement here that someone who roams about aimlessly in their life without a destination without a specific direction without having a mission specific mission is not similar to someone who knows where they're heading who knows their ultimate destination who knows where the whole life is direct them directing them to what their whole life boils down to these are two different people completely taking divergent pathways and this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises and elevates people who know where they're heading who have figured out their life who have managed to find out their mission in this life because mission signifies and it identifies your destination what are you going to do with this life because this life is a gift from Allah he has given it to you and everything in this life including your your lifespan the time that you spend here including your physical body including your senses external senses the five senses that we know and your inner senses including your intellects including your intuition including everything in your body that is a miracle in its own right all of this is a gift from Allah and the conditions and the circumstances that you go through the stages that you go through in this life the moment you're born, then you turn into a child, then you turn into an adolescent, then you turn into an adult, then you, tran you, you transit into middle age, then you become an, a senior person, an older person, then you reach probably a high or a, or a very old age, then you leave this world. Everything that happens in this lifespan, in this time, everything is a gift from Allah, whether you realize it or not. Whether you call it an opportunity or you call it a problem. Whether you call it a challenge or you call it potential. Everything in this life is literally a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing in this life is random. So Allah did not give you these gifts for random, for no reason. He gave you all of this because all of this is supposed to take you somewhere. You are meant to use it in a specific way. You are meant to utilize it to arrive at a certain destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the people who have misused this life, people who will make a very bad use of this life, and so in the hereafter, they will be destined to the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses them, reprimands them, and He says to them, 
And do you think that we have created you in vain? You think we have originated you and put you together for no reason? So in this life, and this life actually is a journey. You are on a journey whether you like it or not. And the stations that you go through one after the other, back to back, is the day and the night. These are your stations in this life. And you are a traveler whether you like it or not. Whether you appreciate it and realize it or not. You are moving from point A to point B. But Allah has given you the power and the ability to choose point B. You can choose it. You can decide consciously, that's where I want to be. That's what I'm going to use everything that Allah put at my disposal. I'm going to use it to arrive at that point. And point B is supposed to be Jannah. It's supposed to be connection and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is supposed to be eternal happiness. And that's the difference between someone who roams about aimlessly in this life. They probably have goals. They probably have destinations that they have chosen for themselves. But all of these are futile, are meaningless. Are meaningless. Because you can't choose a means to become an end. Allah gave us money and wealth, so we utilize it for a good cause to help us. We use it as a means to help us make it back to Allah safely. To help us arrive at paradise. But when you make money and wealth your ultimate goal, then you have altered the scales and you have messed up your journey in this life. And it doesn't make sense. And the price will be hefty. And once you pass the, the point of death, there's no way to come back and make amends. There's no way to come back. So everyone in this life is in a journey. And in a journey, what identifies the journey of a human being is having a mission. Is having a mission. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed us in a way that we are productive. We humans produce results day in and day out. If you look at your life, you're going to see that you have an in, a, some things you take in, an intake, and then you have an output. Input and output. Even if you're sleeping in your bed, there is input and output. Because Allah designed us as agency. He gave us this gift of agency, the ability to produce, to use, to use raw material and shape it, utilize it, and produce something new. It could be of higher and good quality, but it could be of poor and low quality. And the choice is yours. And that's the meaning of the word, one of the meanings of the word Khalifa. Khalifa is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted you with the earth and the resources and everything that he has given you, the time. The possessions, the senses, the faculties that he has bestowed upon us. All of these are gifts and he has put them, he has entrusted them with us. So we are an agent, an active agent who can decide how to use these. And to, to what end to put them in or towards. So every human being, if you do not design and if you do not consciously decide what your mission in this life is, then you are definitely part of someone else's mission if you don't have a plan you just become a segment and an element in someone else's plan they will utilize you they will use you and the first one that you will fall to, or to whose plan you will fall will be shaitan because there is something about missions there is something about our final destiny and our final goal that it has a powerful pull it pulls you Gives you a sense of direction and focus because you know where you're heading. When you travel from here to Malaysia and you have a few connections, stopovers. Let's say you, you're, you're stopping over in Heathrow in London. You don't get out of the airport in London and start touring London to the point you miss your next flight. You don't do that. And if you do that, You'd be wasting your money and your time. And you'd, if you have a mission to accomplish in Malaysia, then you would be losing on that too. Why? Because the destination, the mission is not so clear, is not so powerful. It doesn't have this pull. But when you stop, stop over at Heathrow Airport, 
you realize I'm here for three hours. I'm, I want to make sure that I can make it back to my gate without losing direction, without getting consumed in something else, else or busy with something else to the point where I miss my flight. Why? Because you are on a mission, you have the focus, you have the dedication, and you're going to do it. When you drive from here to another place, whatever stopovers you make on the way, you don't dwell there forever. You don't decide to reside there or take a long stop there. You make it. You, decide, you, you pick up whatever you need. And you fill up your car with gas. You buy some, some snacks to keep you going on the way. But afterwards, what do you do? You carry on on your, on your route. You don't give up on your route. You don't lose your direction. Why? Because you have a final destination. You have a mission to accomplish. And it has the pull to keep you going. Not to lose the direction. Not to get distracted. Not to, to get pulled over somewhere else. And life is just similar to that. When you have defined a mission for your life, you have a product you want to produce. So that when you face, when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, and He will make you stand in front of Him, and He will ask you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ And cause them to stand up before me, because they will be questioned, they will be asked. You have to stand before Allah and you will answer for everything He has given you. What did you do with whatever I have given you? The lifetime, the youth, the money, the wealth, the connections, the relationships, the opportunities. What have you done with all of this? And there is something about the human mind and about the human life that if you don't have a clear destination, you don't have a clear mission, you will, you, will, you will master the art of jumping from one thing to the other. Some of our youth go to university. Some of them are so focused, they know their mission. I want to graduate in three years, in four years, in five years. I want to become a doctor. I want to become an accountant. I want to become a social worker. So they work hard. They do their coursework. They attend the lectures. They do their homework and they have a high level of dedication because they can see the end in their mind. They see what they're trying to get to. They have a mission to accomplish. And when they see other kids smoking weed, drinking alcohol, hanging, on, hanging out with women and wasting their time, they know that's going to take me, that's going to distract me, it will take me out of my way and will slow down my progress and might give, you, give me a complete detour from my direction. So I'm not going to do that. So the pull of their mission is so powerful, it's so strong, they keep going. Some of their colleagues, they say, come and have fun with us. We're having a party tonight. Why don't you join us? That's not for me. I know what I want. And I have this 100%, this kind of laser-like focus. I want to graduate in three years. I have a mission to accomplish. I have something to do. I need to go back to my community. I need to go back to my society. I need to go back to my family so I can benefit them, so I can start producing. I can, I can start get, bringing about results. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my life. These are the people who succeed. Whereas you will find some of the other students, they go there and they are allured. They are duped into the beauty of this youth life. They start chasing women. They start attending parties, drinking alcohol, hanging out with their friends, going here and there and having so many attachments. And what happens? They stay in school for four, five, six, seven, eight years. Some of them, some of them drop out, having wasted many years of their life without, without achieving anything and have, leaving the university with bitter taste with a record of failure right at the beginning, right at the start of their productive life. Many people go through life just like this. You were brought into this world. You were brought on earth here. And you have a specific mission to accomplish, and that's to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the general mission of every human being. But you have to define your own lane. You have to define your specific contribution. What is it? What is the unique 
configuration and set of talents and gifts and strengths Allah put in you that can you can utilize for the service of humanity. What is it? What is it that Allah has given you with which you can spread the truth even more? And you can share it with more people. You can touch people's lives. You can change people's lives. What is it? And don't belittle yourself. Every human being can make a difference. Every human being can make a difference. Not by virtue of your own merits, but by the virtue that you are the creation of Allah. That Allah created you. He made you an agent, a khalifa. He made you a khalifa. You are able to effect results. You're able to produce with whatever he has given you. And how often we bring up our children or we convince ourselves that we're too small to produce something. That we're too little to bring about a contribution to the world. That's for somebody else. That's for something bigger than me. What, may, what makes these people different? We're all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all active agents in this world. So every single one of us should define a mission. And in a way, just like businesses do, write a mission statement for your life. Write a mission statement for your life. What is it you want to achieve with this life? What is it you want to leave this life with? What is it once at the moment you arrive at the moment of death, you look behind you. What do you want to see? So that this will be your asset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that, what is, it, what is the phrase that describes what your life amounts to? What it boils down to? What is it? What is it? What's your dream? What's your vision? What's your mission? And I'll be brutally honest here. If you don't know what it is, if you can't put a label on it, if you can't put words on it, if you can't describe it, you're most likely one of those who are probably roaming around aimlessly. Because that's not how the human mind functions. If you don't give a clear target, the human mind is easy to be distracted. It's easy to be distracted. So everyone has to define their mission in life. Define it and define, you know, what kind of goodness it brings about. What kind of difference it makes. Because that gives it meaning. That gives it power. It gives it the spirituality because we humans, the human soul is designed in a way to contribute. This is why we love to see goodness. We love to see people helping out others. This is why when you look at the social media, a lot of these videos about helping out the poor, helping out the needy, about rescuing someone, bring tears to our eyes and they go viral. And everyone is attracted to them. Why? Because that's the nature of our souls and our hearts. We want to we make a difference in life. We want to see how humans care for one another, love one another, help one another, touch other people's lives. So figure out your own way of touching people's lives. Figure it out. And don't ever, don't ever doubt Allah in His creation that He has made you less than other people. He has not. We all have that potential. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'du. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you consider his life, you will find that his mission was clear. His mission was clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have only sent you as mercy to mankind. So the Prophet Sallallahu saw himself as a mercy to mankind. And how did he visualize this mercy being manifest in the lives of people? He saw that by guiding them from this belief into Iman and faith. And that's what he dedicated his life for. That's what he did. Even when people rejected him, he kept going at them with goodness and mercy and love and connection, reminding them of Allah. Over and over again, he was rejected thousands of times. He would still go back to the same people. He told them about Allah. Some, he, he, he kept going at something until it worked. And if it didn't work, he would, he would search for another way to do it. 
And he did not leave this world until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him the early stages of his success in his mission. When he saw most of the Arabian Peninsula has declared Islam and has come to pay allegiance and to confirm their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they came, they sent uh, delegates to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu saw the early signs of his mission being accomplished. And that's what he lived for. If you look at Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, what was his mission? It was all, all about memorizing the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and relating it. And what did he do? He dedicated his life only for that. Only for that. And this is why he stands out among all other companions with the number of hadith that he related. Khalid ibn al-Walid, what was his mission? He figured out Allah gave him the power and the ability to have military leadership, command. And he was a strategic leader. He has this kind of vision and insight and the ability to plan. So he utilized the rest of his life just to do that, just to help out in that. There, is so many, there are countless, countless ways of how we can fulfill our mission, but you have to figure it out. You have to define it and better off read, write it down. Review it. Revise it every day. Revisit it every day. It will give you so much focus. So much focus and power. And when you realize your vision and internalize it and understand it, have so much clarity about it, you know what to say yes and you know what to say no to. You know when to say yes and accept things. And you know there are good things that you will turn down and you will say no to. Not because they're good, but because they do not align with your vision. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know how to utilize yourself. You, sort of, you, you create some kind of alignment in your life. And that's how you create momentum. You create focus and you start making a difference. And not only individuals should do that. Oftentimes today as we struggle with our children, our teenagers, and our kids, and we find them sometimes we complain, they're rebellious, they com there's a complete disconnect. What can we do? You can create a mission for the family. Do we have a family you know, mission statement that everyone agrees to, everyone bonds to, everyone connects to? Why not? What is, what is our family about? What are the values of our family? Why don't you define a few values of your family? Say respect, love, and obedience to Allah. These are the values that define our family. For example, you communicate them with your spouse and with your children. You revise them every day and you talk about them. You talk about them and you demonstrate them and you show them when you show love to your kids and you have concern for them and you show them connection and you have respect for them and they show respect to you. And when they see you pray and when they see that you recite Quran, when they see you are truthful, when they see that you keep away from the haram, they realize these values are true. They will subscribe to them because they resonate with every heart. Values are universal. Values are spiritual. Every human being possesses them. They're part of our fitrah and natural state of being. So define the mission statement for your family. This is how you bring it together. When you eat together, bring it up. Let some of your children share their stories about their values and how they play out in their life. And you share some of your stories. Read a book together, something about these values. Create more value about this. Create more clarity about this. And it will help us become stronger. Sometimes the things that make a difference in life are the small things. We often want to, make some, want to do something that's too big. We think that's the only way to make things go. But oftentimes it's the little things that really matter. The little things. So I will leave you with just one advice. Figure out your mission in life. Write it down. Create clarity about it. If you're not so clear, ask your spouse. Ask your close friends, the ones that you trust. The honest ones. Try to refine it and work on it. Write a statement that defines the whole story of your life. What is it about? What do you want it to be about? Let's do the same for your family. Help them out. Get them involved in it as well. So you all agree on these things. And let these, this kind of mission for the family and this kind of values, mutual values, 
Let them bring about the connection and the love and unite you as a family and keep your children connected to the family. So regardless what happens outside, they'll still identify with the family, define themselves after it. Their sense of belonging is first and foremost for the family. For the family. And this will keep them on the faith. This will keep them on Iman. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. Really define our mission in this life and make it sincerely for Him alone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our families and keep us all on the straight path. Allahumma ghfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubna wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أبر من هذه الأمة أمر الرشد عز فيه أهل طاعتك ويذل فيه أهل معصيتك ويؤمن فيه بشريعتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كن للمسلمين في الغوطة اللهم فرج عنهم اللهم فرج عنهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فرج عن المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنهم عبادك اللهم إنهم عبادك وإماءك اللهم فرج عنهم اللهم فرج عنهم يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين